today's video, we will be talking about acetic cleavage for ethers. In this case, HI and HBr would be the only uh, reactants, reactants that would work for this reaction. HCl and HF will not work for this reaction. Also, the carbon needs, needs to be sp3 primary carbons, right? sp3 carbons. sp2 will not work. Now let's try an example. Let's actually do the mechanism for this. We start with an ether, okay? Okay, now we have our reactants. Let's use HI in this case. Three lone pairs and iodide. First oxygen lone pairs go to hydrogen. It kicks off the iodide. We form this with a oxygen have a positive charge. Iodide comes in as electro uh, nucleophile, negative charge, goes in, grabs that carbon, kicks it off to the giving electrons to oxygen. We would have HI again. Okay, we're gonna use it again, but now our product would be this oxygen with two lone pairs and hydrogen. Now oxygen goes to hydrogen again, kicks off iodide. We have this. Also, we have uh, CH3I as our byproduct in the last reaction. Okay. Now for this product, we would have oxygen having um, one lone pair, but two hydrogen in this case with a positive charge. Iodide comes in as a nucleophile again with a negative charge, comes in, grabs that carbon, kicks off electrons to oxygen, which we form water in this case, plus CH3I. So this is our final product. So basically, we just grab the carbons in each time. Let's do another example here. Again, we have an aromatic ring in this case, attached to an ether, okay, somewhat of an ether. Now we have excess HI. This will always come with heat, okay, with excess. Grabs the hydrogen, kicks off the iodide. Aromatic rings here, oxygen to one lone pair, attached to the structure with the positive charge. Iodide comes in with the negative charge as a nucleophile, comes and attacks the carbon, uh, the primary carbon. That carbon right there is an sp2 carbon, so it cannot attack there. Attacks there, gives off electrons to oxygen. We have the aromatic ring attached to the OH. Uh, now with iodine on the structure. Now we have excess, right? But we can't use that because it's an sp2 carbon there. So this is our final product. We cannot have an sp2 carbon. Let's do another example. Here we have another aromatic ring attached to somewhat of an ether. In this case, we have excess HI. Also with heat. Now, oxygen goes and grabs the hydrogen, kicks off the iodine. We have this uh, aromatic ring structure with an oxygen with a uh, one lone pair and a positive charge. Iodine comes in as a nucleophile, attacks the carbon, kicks off the electron to oxygen. In this case, we have the aromatic ring with an OH on it plus the CH3I. Now, um, that carbon on the aromatic ring that I will be pointing out circled is an sp2 carbon. This cannot happen in sp2 uh, uh, carbon, and so this is our final product. Let's do another example here. We draw this structure. This time it's not an aromatic ring, so let's see what happens. Let's use excess HBr in this case, with heat also. Oxygen goes, grabs the hydrogen, kicks off the bromine. We have this structure now as um, the ring, also with oxygen connected with a positive charge. It has the uh, two carbons on it. Roman comes in as a nucleophile, negatively, negatively charged, attacks the carbon, kicks off the other uh, electrons to oxygen. We have the structure now, OH, plus the bromine now attached to that carbon. Now we have excess, right? Use HBr again. In this case, that carbon is an sp3 carbon, so we can do this reaction. Now HBr comes again, oxygen grabs the hydrogen, kicks off the bromine. Now we have this structure with H, uh, two hydrogens positively charged. We have the bromine uh, left like this. Now we have the other bromine neg negatively charged, comes in as a nucleophile, attacks that carbon, kicks off electrons to oxygen. Now we have three products. Uh, our main product is this, H uh, the Br plus the other bromine with a byproduct of water that we had made. And this is our final product. So again, this cannot happen for an sp2 carbon for this reaction.